Hello. Welcome, everyone. Um, apologies for our brief delay. We had some technical difficulties. Um, this morning or afternoon, depending on where you are, um, we are joined by Kristen Wilson and Nora Deltoff of ReShare, um, and they will be talking to us about the future of library resource sharing. Um, just a quick reminder, this is being recorded. Um, please use the Q&A box uh, to enter your questions. And at the end of the session, I'll pop back in and uh, we'll get started with those. Um, and I see a question already. Uh, there will be recordings after the conference. Um, an email will be sent um, with uh, the exception of uh, perhaps if uh, we are asked not to share the recording. Um, in that case, slides will be shared as well, though. And with that, um, I will turn it over to Nora and Kristen. Welcome. Thanks. Um, as as you heard, I'm Nora Detlef. Um, I work for the Greater Western Library Alliance, but um, I'm also the vice chair of the ReShare Steering Committee. And Kristen and I are gonna talk with you just a little bit about ReShare and um, where we're at, what the product looks like right now. Um, can everybody see the presentation? Yes. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Okay, so just a little context about Project ReShare before we get going. Um, it formed in mid-2008 with a goal to develop a resource sharing system that was open source, modular, community owned, um, and with a focus on returnable items and a long-term goal of enabling libraries to share in the way that they best wanted to share their resources. From the very beginning, this has been a community-driven approach where we've talked to the folks that are actually doing this work and incorporated the way they want to work into the design of the product. Um, so it's very library-driven and user-centered. Right now, um, after, what is that? three years. We've got uh, 29 members, 11 of those are consortia, 16 are individual libraries, and two are commercial partners. So when we started, um, we started with a big question of what should the next generation of resource sharing look like? And part of the story is that at the time, um, there were some, you know, monolithic presences dominating resource sharing, as there still are. Um, and the, who really thought that they were the folks to determine what the next generation of resource sharing looked like. And those of us that, that did the work on the daily um, really felt like we should be the ones driving that. Um, so all this market consolidation taking place was limiting the choices that practitioners had. OCLC acquired Relay, um, Ex Libris uh, later acquired Rapid ILL, um, and then III. So the choices that we had for products to use were being limited over time. Um, at the same time, the landscape included increasing patron expectations, so the desire to pick up their materials anywhere they want, the desire to have unmediated borrowing, regardless of the time of day or what your staffing situation looked like, and they wanted a smoother user experience that could pass them between systems less so that it was a little less rocky to navigate. Um, also, there was the pricing, the price of, the, of participating in these existing sharing networks kept going up and up, keeps going up and up. Um, some of them have been really well developed over decades and decades, but they haven't necessarily kept pace with current technology. Um, they're missing things like AC, API support, integrations with multiple systems. And so they result in very inefficient processes for a lot of library staff. Um, and they cost more than we can really justify paying for outdated technology. Um, and then, of course, libraries in general are getting more and more interested in new approaches to solving our own problems. So openness for our content and for our systems, uh, using technology that we want to use and what we can actually afford instead of paying a lot to participate in these monolithic systems that kind of do everything and know how we want to do things. So that was the context. So from the very beginning, we set around about creating ReShare as a community, as well as a resource sharing project. 
product rather. We wanted to make sure that the community interests were taken into account and that people were people who were actually doing the work were included in the process. So one of the very first things we did was to create a community charter. And that charter states that the community will operate as an open community, encouraging diverse and um, participation by libraries, consortia, vendors, and service providers, and anyone aligned with the purpose and the mission of the community. So it is open in every sense of the word. Um, we formed, in order to have some governance to figure out how we were gonna move forward, we formed a steering committee and the, the purpose of the steering committee is to provide oversight for the community, set the strategic roadmap, um, and determine who gets the resources, as well as spending a lot of time trying to find those resources and procure them, um, managing risks, and um, handling of all the financial aspects. In addition, there's a product management team, and that team is uh, primarily responsible for development and charting the course for development. They handle things like the scope of the project. They um, agree on the developmental priorities at the, the feature level. Um, and they set the final content of each of the releases. And Kristen's gonna talk to you a little bit later about uh, what that kind of looks like. Um, so they, they develop and maintain our roadmap, which Kristen's gonna show you. Um, and they also charter the subject matter experts groups. Um, the subject matter expert group determines detailed functional requirements. And in this, we've been very intentional about seeking a wide range of people who are uh, practicing resource sharing um, at a variety of different library types so that we can get these user stories that will actually drive the project as it develops. So um, we want people with deep expertise in the workflows and a vision for how this area can be evolved. Uh, the group worked very hard for the first 18 months to sort of determine the requirements, reviewing prototypes as they were coming out and really giving intense feedback to the development team. Uh, right now they're not meeting regularly, but we are uh, seeking to restart the product management team as we go into the next phase of our roadmap. We also have the development team, uh, without whom none of this would be possible. Um, and they're, of course, responsible for determining the software architecture, writing the code, um, figuring out the code quality guidelines, um, and basically creating the software. Um, they use JIRA to capture the software requirements and to make sure that they're addressed in, uh, in an orderly fashion. They work really closely with the product management team and with our usability designers to make sure that reshare is being implemented according to that vision that the, the stakeholder community has. Um, and of course, one of the most important things is that it, it all the software is released under an Apache 2.0 license, which means it is open in perpetuity. Um, and I, I think this audience is probably familiar with the content of that license, but just to um, just to read my favorite part, I guess. Um, each contributor hereby grants to you a perpetual, worldwide, non-exclusive, no charge, royalty-free, irrevocable copyright license to reproduce, prepare der derivative works of, publicly display, publicly perform, sub-license, and distribute the work and such derivative works in source or object form. So it is a truly open um, software as well as a truly open community. Okay, a little bit about our business model. Obviously, we rely um, on our membership. So as members come in, they, they, there is a suggested membership level uh, that they contribute, but we also work very closely with people to determine what fits their budget and what fits their ability to participate in the project. Um, thus far, our member contributions are right around 475,000 real dollars um, and then in-kind contributions as well. And we, we haven't quite figured out how to measure the value of um, those in-kind contributions, that's one of the goals for this year. Um, our anchor partners, which includes Index Data, um, have contributed out almost $2 million of in-kind labor. And that's most of our development um, and just basically the, the blood, sweat, and tears that have gone into actually making the product. Um, so the hope from our anchor partners in contributing so much uh, time and resources into this development is that they will recoup some of that initial investment in service contracts down the road. Um, but there's, there's definitely not an expectation that they're going to make that entire $2 million back. This is not about making a profit for them. Um, it is definitely a partnership in order to move resource sharing forward. So um, that service partner relationship looks like um, it will be competition based on service provision instead of just 
one system who owns everything and tries to capitalize on you know, having that monopoly. Um, the Certified Service Providers Program has vetted providers and transparent pricing and um, index data will work with you on determining the price ahead of any kind of implementation schedule. And implementers have the choice to self-host or to purchase those um, hosting and support services from one of our partners. So the aim here is to encourage library choice um, in systems, in integrations, and in the way that they move forward with the software. As of right now, Palsy is in the midst of their implementation, um, and they are the first group of implementers. So. Um, we're kind of getting a feel for how things are going to go. The implementation team is, you know, um, building a plane as they fly, so to speak, creating the integrations with the software, with the ILS systems that Palsy libraries are using. Um, and then next in line, once Palsy is complete, is Connect New York. Okay. So a little bit about the future. At the very beginning of May, the steering committee met in order to kind of determine what would be the next phase of development for ReShare. Um, as Kristen's going to talk to you about, we're about to uh, come to the end of our initial roadmap. And so what we wanted to determine is where do we go next? And there are a lot of directions we could take. Um, what we determined is that we would work more on the current returnables product um, to develop a robust and full featured product to kind of get all of the things that had brought the features that had been on the roadmap integrated into the system, including those that support the multi type consortia. Our um, consortial partners were in from the very beginning and one of the original visions of research was to have something that would work better for consortia um, than the current landscape provides. So we want to make sure that we are responding to that initial vision. Um, that we're building that core functionality that's going to make this a robust and usable product. And basically that we're fulfilling the promises that we set out with. Um, and of course, as folks come online and implement, we want to make sure we're providing robust support and being responsive um, to the folks that have already turned on their returnables product. Choosing to continue our focus on um, strengthening the returnables product, of course, means that our focus will not be on some of the other areas that we have on the map for later. Um, but that doesn't prevent us from moving forward. Um, although we will continue to focus our development efforts on that returnables product, we are also mapping out um, new strategies to allow us to continue work on non-returnables, on controlled digital lending, and on creating an open platform shared bibliographic infrastructure. So the, the big, hairy, audacious goal for ReShare is to one day offer an alternative to the OCLC uh, resource sharing suite of services and discovery services and that um, we will continue to work on that but we need some additional uh, resources in particular we we need some more development bandwidth and so we're trying to find ways to um, expand our fundraising efforts we're trying to find more ways to tap development resources that we may not have found yet and basically just kind of expand what we're able to do and how we're able to work on this. All right, and I'm going to hand it over to Kristen for a brief demonstration of the returnables product. Thanks, Nora. So for this demonstration, I'm going to be walking through um, the reshare software and kind of hitting on the major components of what would make up a reshare environment. And as I do that, I'll try to focus a little bit on some of our goals and you know, some of the, I guess, kind of the ethos of our development and some of the things that we've wanted to embrace with the project. So I'm gonna start out, well, actually, before I, I jump into the demo, the other thing I did just wanna kind of clarify um, to set the stage is that as Nora has alluded to, we've really been focusing on our returnables product and just to kind of set the scope of this, Returnables is really focused on resource sharing of physical materials between members of either a consortium or really any group of libraries that has a reciprocal lending and borrowing relationship. So the idea here is not kind of that global ILL model where anyone using ReShare can borrow from anyone else, but it's kind of saying, this is my group of core lenders and borrowers who I always wanna to go to first. 
And so the idea is to facilitate within that group. And then some of those other goals are things that we may pursue more long-term. So I'm going to start out here um, and I'll, I'll be using our development environment that we've been working on for Connect New York for this demo. And the first part that I'll be showing is our reshare shared inventory. And so uh, since this is a WolfCon audience, I'm guessing this looks familiar to a lot of people. Uh, we basically have used Folio inventory as a starting point here. And the goal is essentially to build a shared consortial catalog um, for all of the members of a consortium who are participating in reshare. And so what we've done is take Folio inventory as a starting point and made a few modifications to inventory to be able to support that consortial view. Um, the main things that we're doing that are different, one is that we're able to pull in mark records from more than one source, so more than one source library. Um, we've added a matching algorithm to be able to match those records. And we've added our own version of uh, source record storage, which will allow us to store all of those incoming mark records behind the scenes. So essentially more than one mark record stored for each inventory record. Um, and so just to give you a little bit of a view of this, I'm gonna go ahead and do a search here. And so you can see we've got a bunch of records coming up in this inventory. I'm just going to scroll down um, and look for uh, the particular title that I wanted to take a look at. Oops. And so when I open up this record, I'll just uh, show a few things here. So the first thing that you can see is that we've got holdings for several different libraries within the Connect New York Consortium. So you can see Maris, sorry, TUS Point. Uh, and so on. And some of these have, may have more than one item. And so essentially what we're doing is harvesting the records from each of these libraries. Uh, we're using uh, a couple different methods to harvest records. Uh, we are using OAI PMH whenever possible because that really uh, is a smooth process. Uh, not all ILSs support that. And so if we don't have it available, we can also just harvest records from a folder on an FTP server. And we're using a tool called the Harvester that uh, we have developed at Index Data that we've actually used for quite a long time. But we have open sourced a version of that tool as part of ReShare. And so that kind of picks up these records and brings them in. And then we run them through our matching process and just to uh, scroll down here, you can see we've also added a field to the records and in inventory. That's the instance match key. And essentially what this does is it takes uh, strings from different fields on the mark record and creates this long string. And then any records that create the same match key are matched. And this is something we've actually uh, borrowed the specs for this matching process from the Colorado Alliance of Research Libraries and their Gold Rush product. Um, and so I think, you know, between that and, you know, just the fact that we're obviously building on the Folio platform and some of the existing functionality uh, really kind of gets at the idea behind ReShare, which is that um, beyond just the immediate goals of building a resource sharing system, I think we also really see ReShare as kind of a further furthering of this goal of kind of open source community building among libraries, being able to benefit from other players in the open source community to build something new and move forward. And I think we just have seen that so much within ReShare. It's a really nice element of the project. So from here, I'm going to switch to another tab. And this is actually another great open source intersection. So we are using ViewFind to provide a consortial catalog for consortia that are using ReShare. So you can see here, we've got our catalog for Connect New York, and this is still something of a work in progress. So you may see uh, some things that don't look totally polished, but it's, it's in good shape uh, for a demo. And again, it's been great to be able to work with ViewFind um, and have them as part of the OLF as well and be able to use this open source tool. So really the goal of ViewFind and, and this tool is to provide a public facing view of the metadata that is in that shared inventory. And so this is kind of a, a nice like out of the box interface that all the members of the consortium can direct their users to, uh, to be able to search the whole consortium and place requests. 
So really you can see this is just kind of the, a lot of the same titles um, and things that we were seeing in the shared index will be, they'll all be here, um, probably ranked differently just because this is a little bit more of a robust algorithm. And there's so many nice features that we're getting from Viewfind, um, you know, all the facets, the book covers, um, just the way that everything works pretty much out of the box has been really nice. So we've really only made a few small changes to Viewfind, and we are um, going to be publishing um, a reshare theme and module for Viewfind that will be available in GitHub. Um, and I'll just go ahead and um, see if I can open one of these. So you can see we've got just a full record view uh, as well. And this one's just got a couple holdings, but we'll be able to see the holdings from across the consortium. And one of the things that we're working on right now is um, a live availability service so that we'll also be able to pull in, you know, availability of whether this is on the shelf at each library and we don't have that in place quite yet. Uh, the other thing I'll mention about Viewfind and about discovery is that you know, part of our goal with ReShare has really been to be flexible and to value user experience. And, and we really wanna make it so that people can do what they want with the tool. And so one of the things uh, that we're doing is also through kind of ViewFind and what's already available, we're able to offer an OAI PMH endpoint for all the records that are here in ViewFind. And essentially what that will allow people to do is to harvest those records and use them for whatever types of integrations they're interested in doing. So they would be able to um, put those records into a local catalog if they had their own ViewFind or Blacklight implementation. Uh, we have a library in Palsy that's piloting an integration with EDS. So pulling all these records into their EDS instance and then uh, basically linking people back through ViewFind to actually place the requests. Um, but for a lot of libraries, the goal is really to offer that kind of single point of uh, contact for their patrons and not be sending people to lots of different places. So that option is available, but we also know that not everybody has the bandwidth to be doing those types of integrations. And so then the, the ViewFind site kind of fills the role for those who just want something that's gonna work out of the box. So the next thing that I'll do is to actually place a request here in ViewFind so we can see how that looks. Um, before I do that, I need to log in here. <clears throat> and uh, this is still um, not really branded, but you can see um, a little bit of how we'll be handling authentication here. So we're using a product called Keycloak, which is another open source product that essentially almost like a switchboard that can then go out and work with different identity management systems. And so you can see right now, we, we're starting to get this up and running and we've got several of the Connect to New York schools here. You know, So if I'm a, a student, I can choose my library and log in with my normal SSO credentials. Um, in this case, I am not affiliated with any of those. So I'm just gonna go ahead and log in using a test login. So this is apparently not right. go. And so then that's going to send me back here to ViewFind. And I'm going to go ahead and do a search just for reshare because we've got this great uh, reshare test book in here that I will request. And so when I click on that, um, that's going to bring up our request confirmation screen. And from here, I can choose my pickup location. And I can fill in a, a date needed by, if I needed a specific volume or had notes, those are optional fields. Um, a couple things to mention here. One is that this is a pickup location for Marist College. And so I'm basically acting as if I'm a user from Marist College. The other, and I know this is a bit small, it, it's not really possible to make it larger, but up here in the URL uh, bar, you can see that we're using open URL to pass this request into reshare. So we're able to pull in some of the details from that record in the discovery tool, as well as the user ID from the SSO service. So that way reshare has everything that is needed to create that request. So I'll go ahead and confirm this. And then from there, I'm going to move into um, the reshare system itself. And so this is the reshare tenant for Marist College. 
And again, you can see this is built on the Folio platform. It looks a lot like Folio, except that we've got some different apps up here at the top that are specifically for reshare. Um, I'll just very briefly show our directory. So this is essentially a library directory for the consortium that shows all of the libraries that are members of the consortium. And that includes some uh, information about each one. And it, this is kind of a mix of information that's helpful to a human. So contact information, um, and, and uh, you know, just details about each library, and then some information that's helpful to the system. So lending symbols, uh, we have here service accounts, which are not that exciting, um, but are worth mentioning that we are using the ISO 18626 protocol for interlibrary loan transactions. So everything here is standards based and we use that protocol to to communicate between the different nodes in this network uh, that represents the consortium. And one of the nice things about that is in the future, um, any other interlibrary loan systems that also use the ISO protocol, we should be able to interoperate with them fairly easily. Um, and so that's something we're already looking into. We've been having some conversations with Ex Libris about integration with Rapido, and that would all be built on that protocol. So from here, I'm going to move into the request app. And so this is the app in ReShare where you can see all of the requests that your library's patrons have placed. Um, and I've been using Marist for a lot of testing. So we've got a good list of uh, requests in here. But at the top of the list, we can see this is the request that I just placed. Um, and I can go ahead and open that up. And we've got, um, for the UI for this, there's kind of two tabs. So there's the flow view, which is a, kind of a snapshot of the request and lets you perform action. So right now, as the requester, the only thing I can do is cancel this. Um, and then we have the details view, and this is where we have kind of like the full set of metadata that is associated with this request. The one thing that I do want to quickly show is the requesting user. So we see this on the requesting side. Um, and when I logged in in ViewFind, I actually logged in using a test account that was associated with this real user ID in Maris College, Maris College's uh, ILS, which is Alma. And so as, I, as we created this request, we are able to use the NSIP protocol to do a live lookup for this patron and pull back in a first and last name and email address. And we are using NSIP at a number of different points throughout the workflow, and I'll mention some of those. But I did just kind of want to highlight the fact that ReShare is really intended to be kind of an ILS neutral resource sharing solution. So you can use ReShare no matter what your underlying ILS is. And we're working on building these integrations with specific ILSs right now, targeting all the ones that we need for Palsy and Connect New York. Um, and then as new implementers come on board, you know, we may have to add a number. But I think by the time those two consortia go live, we should have nine different ILS integrations, including Folio. Um, so that really makes this something that you can use with a consortium, regardless of whether or not you're all on the same ILS. So from here, I'm going to switch to the supply view. So this is a separate research tenant, and this is for Canisius College. And so I'm, I've got my supply app open already. And this is where I can see all of the requests that my library is supplying to others in the consortium. And I just need to go ahead and refresh this. So I can see here at the top of the list, I've got um, the request that I've just been working with and I can open this here from the supplier point of view. Um, and so you can see I've got a lot more options of things that I can do here because uh, I'm the supplier, so it, the ball's kind of in my court. Um, one thing that I'll mention is that when I open up this request, uh, it's got a state here of awaiting pull slip printing. And one of the things that we are able to do is to use C3950 with all of the local ILSs as well. So when this request is first assigned to Canisius College, we go out and we check their catalog to see if there is an available copy of this item on the shelf. 
and we're able to pull in some details about that and, and populate the record so that for them, this is ready to go. They can print this pull slip. There's also a bulk pull slip printing option. And then they can just go and begin to pull all of their outstanding requests from the shelf and fill them. Uh, so I'll go ahead and print this pull slip. And this is just going to bring up a pull slip here that can be used to get this item from the shelves. Um, you can see here we've got a location. and this would typically be a call number. Um, and then this can also be used as a book band. And now that I have uh, printed that, I can see that I'm in a searching state. And the next thing that I would do is actually go and pull this item from my shelves and fill the request. Since I don't have that uh, available with me right now, and, and this isn't even really an item, I'm just gonna click on this link that's gonna open up the view of this in the shared index. Um, and from there, I can copy the item barcode. And so I'll paste that in and fill the request. And you can see that just took a little bit of an extra second. And that's because that was another NSIP interaction where we actually used NSIP to check this item out in Alma. Uh, Canisius is also an Alma user. And you can see here that we were able to get a due date back from Alma that we have stored on the record. So right now, all of the loan periods and everything can be managed locally. And we've also got that item barcode here on the request. Um, so go ahead and mark this shipped. And now I'm going to switch back to the request point of view, and I just need to refresh this. And so now I can see that the requester's view has also been updated to show that this has been shipped. I've got that item barcode and due date now available on the requester's side. And so the next thing for me to do is to receive this item when it arrives. And at this point, I'm just going to quickly run through the remaining steps in the process. So I can mark this received. Um, I'll note that that's also an NSIP interaction where we will create a temporary item record for that title in the ILS and place a hold on it for the patron who requested the item. Um, at this point, we're in a local circulation process. So any kind of um, circ functionality, we're just kind of turning that over to the ILS. And ReShare doesn't really care about this until the patron actually turns it back into the library. And at that point, we can mark it return by the patron and also mark it return shipped. And then I'll uh, head back over to the supply app and update that. And from here, I can complete the request. And that's another NSIP interaction where we will check the book back in in the ILS as well. Um, and so that gets us to the end of the request process. Um, I didn't show this in the demo, but I, I did want to note that we also have the update app which is used for bulk processing of requests where you can choose an action and then perform that action on uh, a number of items in a row. And we know for a lot of high volume uh, lenders that you know, that's gonna be more desirable than doing things one by one. And so that uh, wraps it up for the demo part. And then I just have a couple slides on the roadmap before I turn this back over to Nora. So in terms of our immediate planned roadmap for ReShare, um, we have a few releases that are planned right now. So we're hoping to push out kind of a small release in the next couple of weeks that basically will um, push out our remaining ILS integrations that we need for implementers. So Koha, Millennium, TLC, and Voyager. Um, and just to mention the ones we've already done, because people are often interested in that, we've done Olive, Alma, Folio, Sierra, and WMS. So we've got a lot of the big ones covered. Um, so we're, we should have that out uh, in a couple weeks. And then we have uh, another kind of uh, major release planned for the end of July. And this is gonna include that real-time availability service I mentioned. We're working on enhancing our patron management features and also on some functionality for multi-volume requests. And then uh, we have kind of reserved the next release after that um, for basically bug fixes and priority enhancements for implementers and also to address some technical debt. 
So we really won't be planning anything big uh, for that release, but we're just kind of keeping that open so that we know we can address any concerns that come up. And then beyond that, uh, we'll be thinking about returnables and our various development priorities and, um, you know, getting back to what Nora was talking about and, and our commitment to keep developing this area of the system. There is a lot that we can still do with returnables and that is really highly desired by our community. So we'll be kind of um, working with our product management team to look at all these different areas and start to prioritize what we want to do in our next couple releases. Um, and just to kind of highlight some of the things that are, are on our radar. Um, so for the shared index, we definitely want to improve our matching process. I think that's probably the big goal there, um, especially a number of these are starred as multi-type priorities and multi-type refers to a consortium that has multiple types of libraries. So academic, public, school, um, and they tend to have maybe not different needs, but different priorities and certain things that will really benefit them a lot and that matching process is one just because the quality of mark records can vary so widely um, and the match key that we use right now might not always work for them. Um, resource sharing functionality, you know, there's still a lot of core stuff that we can do. Um, functions like claims, recalls, renewals, we need to support um, more um, more sophisticated loan rules. Uh, there's definitely a lot of concerns about anonymized lending and, and security of data that we want to try to do a better job on. So there's quite a bit we can do there. Integrations, we definitely want to be working to be able to kind of push requests out to other services if they can't be filled within reshare. Um, and also communicate with non reshare nodes. So that kind of is like I mentioned, we, we've been talking about an integration with Rapido, and we probably would do something like that to support that integration. Um, delivery, you know, we talked early on about supporting more robust shipping functionality, the ability to sort of create shipments, say what's in them have some special apps for boxing and unboxing shipments and integrating with shipping vendors. So that's something we need to figure out when we can get back to. And then we also need to beef up kind of the consortial management uh, view of things right now. Everything in Reshare is very distributed um, because it's not, there's no central broker. It's a pure peer-to-peer -peer system. So we need to figure out how to support consortial managers in being able to work with all of the members of the consortium and to route across um, across them. And then, you know, thinking a little bit beyond that, we're very interested in the idea that a library can easily belong to more than one consortia and how to kind of route and load balance requests across different consortial groups. So there's quite a bit that we can do there. And so at this point, I'm gonna stop sharing and turn this over to Nora for the last few slides. Thanks, Kristen. Um, by the way, we have a lot of questions coming in and I have been trying to keep up with those that I'm able to answer, but some of them are gonna require your expertise. So I've um, got a few more slides and then Kristen will- Thanks, Nora, um, yeah. We can get in. to those at the end. Okay. Um, so um, there are lots of ways to get involved with Reshare. In particular, we really need developers uh, with Folio platform know-how. Um, and that coming to this audience, um, I thought it was a good time for us to actually reach out because so many of you will have that uh, that knowledge at hand. Um, so we're looking for back end developers and front end developers and both of those specifically with um, some folio specific experience. Um, but we're also broadly looking for anyone with HTML or CSS skills and uh, WordPress. Um, and all of those are to move us forward both on the, the returnables product, but also elsewhere on the roadmap. And of course, there are many other ways to be involved with the project. Um, and you can visit the website if you have any interest in getting involved or know of anyone who does. Um, and there's contact information here on the slides, which I'm sure we will be sharing after the presentation. And that is it for the this portion of the presentation, if we want to move to some of the questions. Thanks, 
Thank you, uh, Nora and Kristen. This has been great. Um, I always love demos. So um, I will help kick us off with the questions. And first up is, have any folio libraries been able to use OAI PMH for their harvesting? Um, so uh, the answer to that right now is no, unfortunately. I think that folio's OAI PMH capabilities uh, just are still kind of evolving and we're hoping that it will be there um, pretty soon. Uh, you know, at Index Data, we do have a mutual customer in Lehigh University has implemented Folio and it will be part of Palsy's reshare implementation. And so we've been doing a little bit of testing with them. We did test OAI PMH, but it wasn't quite ready for prime time. So we're using the FTP method and then we'll, we'll revisit it with them. And we'll have a number of folio implementers um, within Palsy as well that will be EBSCO customers. So um, I think we'll you know, just keep working with all of them as things evolve to test that out. Sounds great, thank you. Uh, next question. If a library is using folio as its ILS, can it perform fulfillment requesting management in their ILS, or will they need to pop over to a different Folio reshare instance to perform those functions? Um, are any of the other ILSs considering bringing those pieces of functionality into their system? Yeah, that's a great question. And that's something that we've just been starting to experiment with. Um, you know, since it is all using the Folio platform, I think kind of the first goal would be to just provide a uh, kind of a, a platform or an environment that has both all the folio and all the reshare apps in one place so that at least um, you're not having to go to two different URLs and have two different logins. Um, it could be you know, one central point of management. Um, but even then, I think at first it would still kind of function a little bit separately with like reshare apps and folio apps. Um, and we have had some interesting conversations in the past um, particularly with the consortia SIG in kind of its earlier iteration about what would it look like to streamline some of this even more between reshare and folio. And I think there's a lot of interesting things there. Like, you know, do we, do we need NSIF if it's really all in the same tenant? Um, do we need a separate folio requests and reshare requests? You know, maybe there's a way to kind of interfile all of those. So I think there's a lot of potential there. It's just a question of kind of finding the resources and, and the desire to move some of that forward. But I, I hope as we see more mutual customers between the two, they'll start to be more of an impetus towards that. That sounds great. Um, okay, so another question. Uh, do you know of library members in ReShare who want to use discovery layers other than ViewFind? For example, Blacklight or EDS maybe? Yeah, so I, I did mention this briefly, but we do have one library piloting an EDS integration. And so they're going to be using that OAI PMH endpoint from ViewFind to harvest the records into EDS. And then right now, the way they're, they're looking at it, doing it is that if from within EDS, you, you'll have a link that says, you know, like request through easy borrow, and that will just take you into the view fine record for the record you're already looking at. And you can actually place the request from there. Um, because we use open URL, we can, um, you know, they could kind of bypass the view fine step if they wanted to, it's just a little bit of extra work. Um, and then we do have another library within Palsy that is considering an integration like that in their own local catalog. And to be honest, I don't think I, they even mentioned what that catalog is, but they, they do want to use that open URL functionality. So they'll basically be kind of creating um, open URLs based on the metadata in their catalog and the, the login information from the patron and just kind of sending those directly into reshare. So I think we'll see more of that, but there's quite a bit of flexibility in terms of how we can do it. Um, that's really interesting. It actually leads into uh, the next question, which is about open URL. Um, does it have an endpoint that enforces the user ID being passed into reshare? Um, is reshare protecting against incoming requests with bogus or compromised user IDs? 
Yeah, so at the moment, we're not really doing a good job of protecting against that. Um, and, you know, a lot of libraries are, are coming from systems that already do kind of the same thing. So theoretically, you know, you could construct an open URL with any user ID and pass that into the system. And we know that that's not ideal. And so we're looking at some solutions like essentially, you know, having some kind of proxy or IP recognition to be able to send a request into reshare. And then that would, you know, we would grant that to the viewfind sites that we control. And then we can also grant that access to anybody who we know is doing a legitimate integration um, from their library catalog. And I think then that's something too that, you know, may evolve over time to become more secure. So, you know, we're still kind of early on, but that's definitely on our radar. Great, thank you. Okay. Um, are there any connections being made with Share VDE? Um, you know, at this point, I don't think we've had a lot of intersection with them. Um, I don't know, Nora, are you aware of anything related to that? I am not, no. Yeah. So I guess the, the, the short answer is no, um, but maybe the slightly longer answer is that at this time, you know, Nora had mentioned there's kind of this like stretch goal for reshare, which would be to basically turn the shared inventory into more of like a full featured cataloging and bib utility. And then there could be some interesting intersections with share VDA there. I mean, I think there's a lot of interest and overlap with the reshare partners in, you know, linked data projects and, and that type of thing. So you know, I think there'd be a lot of openness to having whatever that solution becomes, not just be a purely mark-based solution. Okay. And we have a question about the matching code repository. Um, is it possible to share a link to that? Uh, there's a couple people who are interested in how it's implemented. Yeah, we have a page on our wiki that talks about the matching process and it links to the spec for the match key. Um, and I don't have that right at hand, but I we can send that out. I'm not sure what the best way to, would be to distribute that after the meeting. Um, would it be possible to add it to the slides? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can do that. Okay, that would be a great way to, to um, share it widely. Okay. And uh, regarding the request for, to for participants with HTML experience, if uh, people want to get, or if you want to get help with development, what's the best way to get in touch and see what it's all about? Yeah, so I think the best way would be to email info at projectreshare.org. Um, and, you know, we can set up a conversation with you. Um, I think if you have, you know, if there's people out there who are considering this and might be interested in contributing some resources for development or for web development, you know, that we might, it might be interesting to work with you to figure out, you know, how can you become a member on the basis of that or what's the best way to kind of formalize that relationship. So definitely encourage people to, to get in touch with that info at projectreshare.org address and then somebody will be uh, back in touch to set something up. Great, thank you. And it looks like uh, possibly our last question. Um, have you had any interest from Symphony users? Oh yeah, you know, I just left them off the list when I was saying that uh, verbally, but we do uh, have an integration with Symphony that's already complete. Um, and we, uh, they were actually great in terms of working with us to give us a sandbox environment for testing and everything. So that's all good to go. Excellent, thank you. Um, any last thoughts or questions, Kristen or Nora? Um, I, we have answered a lot of questions today. This was a really great presentation, really active group. Um, and I'm sure nobody would mind having a few extra minutes back at the end, but I just wanna make sure we're not cutting anyone off. Yeah, we just wanted to make sure that there was plenty of time for questions. Um, so I'm glad that there were so many, but I think we can oh, yeah. wrap up if there's nothing else. Um, 
but yeah, mainly just, you know, encouraging people that if you're interested, if this sounds like something that you could see yourself getting involved in, to um, check out our website at projectreshare.org. Um, I guess I will mention that if you, on our website, if you look under the product menu, there's a product demo page that has some more demo videos. And that also has a live demo site where you can actually go and place requests and see the software in action. So um, a lot of people have found that really helpful. So check that out and then be in touch if you're interested in getting involved. That's great. And we've just had one last question come in. Um, the presentation gave a very good idea of how it would work within the consortia or joining multiple as li multiple libraries. Are there any plans or ideas for the more distant future to add some kind of federated approach where two consortias could communicate with each other's reshare instance for cross consortial interlibrary loans? Yeah, that's definitely on our radar. Maybe Nora, do you want to take that one since you're coming from kind of the consortial point of view? Yeah, I mean, I think that that was part of the initial vision and our focus on consortia is that we would be able to roll a request from one group to another. Um, so I think that is in the long term plans. Great. Yeah, and I'll, I'll just add to that, you know, we, do, we will, as we get some more implementers coming up, we probably will have some real use cases. I mean, there's sort of one one scenario, which is a library that's a member of two consortia and they want to participate through both in both through reshare. And then there is kind of what you mentioned of two consortia who might say, you know, we want to lend within each of our own consortia first, but then if that doesn't pan out, then, you know, maybe this other group is our second port of call and, you know, sort of figuring out how we can route through all those pathways. So I think we're, we're very interested in all of that. It sounds like you guys have a really robust roadmap ahead of you. Yeah, it's definitely just the challenge of getting the resources to do it all. But yeah, we have no shortage of great ideas and, and great people who know how to get those things done. Yeah, and I think, I don't, oh, sorry. sorry I think ahead. the benefit, the amazing thing about Reshare is that we've come this far and that there's, um, there is real software that has resulted from the community infrastructure that we've put in place. So I think that there's really nothing we can't tackle now that we're, as strong as we are. It's definitely a success story for sure. Um, and we have one more question that's come in. How far in the future are non-returnables and CDL? We would love to know the answer to that question. <laughs> um, and as, as Christian, just, Christian just said, it's um, a lot of it is dependent upon uh, how much, how well we're resourced to tackle those uh, development areas. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think at this point, though, we don't really have a firm answer for that. Um, you know, I think what we've realized is that our existing development resources basically enough to kind of keep the returnables project going. Um, and we really need to keep that commitment for now. So, you know, I think we're, we're interested in figuring out, like, could we source a second development team for one of those areas? Um, and that you know, that would require a pretty good influx of resources. But I think, you know, if there's people out there who are really interested in CDL or non-returnables and you could see yourself getting like really involved, um, you know, that that's what's gonna push those other projects forward. All right. Nora, Kristen, thank you so much again for being with us today. And thank you for uh, joining us, all of our participants. We've got a great group today. The questions were excellent. Um, we are ending a few minutes early, but our next session starts at 1145 Eastern. And thank you everyone again. We'll see you soon. Thank you, everybody. <laughs>